Welcome to A Shot of Ag. My name is Rob Sharkey. I'm a fifth generation farmer from just outside of Bradford, Illinois. As a farmer, I know what's important, dirt. We all stand on it, we all love it, but do we know much about it? Well, today we're gonna to talk with Bob McLeese. Now he is from Monticello, Illinois, and you're a soil scientist. I am. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean is I study the dirt, but we don't call it dirt, we call it soil. When I was in FFA, my freshman year in high school, uh, Mr. Owens sets a class down and gives us a piece of paper and he says, I want you to write the definition of soil. The only thing is you can't use the word dirt. It's not fair. Well, he was a smart man. So what did you write? Debatable, huh? What did you write? I you remember. Did, did, I, none of us got it right. <laughs> I remember that. None of us got it right. And I, to this day, I, it's the definition is like it's a, a makeup of minerals, and I don't know what dirt is. Do you want me to give you a definition? I would love. Yeah. Now this is this is from a soil scientist, soil classifier definition, okay. not an agronomist or a farmer okay. or an engineer. So soil is a collection of natural bodies mm -hmm. that occupy portions of the earth's surface and support plants, and here's the important part, and whose properties are due to the integrated effects of climate and organisms acting on parent material conditioned by relief over periods of time. And if you know that, you can you know soils. Uh, you lost me like in the <laughs> I know I first did. three words. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> Dirt is misplaced soil. There you go. Dirt is misplaced soil. There you go, yeah. Okay, like a weed is a misplaced yeah, plant. exactly. I wish I would have known that when I was a <laughs> freshman in high school. Uh, you were soil scientist for 35 years. Uh, wh why, why did you get into it? What was the catalyst? What's the love of dirt? Uh, it, well, dirt can be sexy if you look at it the right way. <laughs> like in the moonlight? <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> no, I, I always loved maps as a kid, and I was going to major in geography, went to Northern Illinois University, mm -hmm. and in the geography department there was a professor who taught five different soil classes. I took intro to soils and fell in love with it. Okay. And decided that's my major. I, you're like, did, were you a farm kid? Well, no, no. I grew up okay. in a little town, Tawanda, right on the edge of town. My grandpa farmed just a mile outside of town. So I, you know, worked on the farm, walked beans, baled hay, shelled corn. Yeah. Uh, and those farm, you know, jobs back as a kid, but I didn't grow up on the farm. So when you graduated from college, did you go right into being a soil scientist? Well, my plan was to get a job with the Soil Conservation Service as a soil scientist on their soil in their soil survey program. Yeah. But uh, President Nixon at the time uh, had a hiring freeze on for federal employees. So I was lucky enough to get an assistantship to go to Michigan State University mm -hmm. uh, to get a master's in soil. So I went to MSU then. And then after I graduated there is when I started mapping. With the USDA. What's the USDA? United it, States Department of Agriculture. Well, I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's who you were working for? Yeah. This, so one of the agencies in USDA is the Soil Conservation Service. Yeah, but you were working with the USDA. R right. I was yeah. a USDA employee. Okay. Yeah. What? Uh, when did you work with the uh, South Dakota? With the oh, the Bureau, Bureau of Indian, Indian Affairs. Affairs. Oh, that yeah. was back in the 70s. Actually, when I, I, I need to take back what I said. When I first started mapping soils, I was with the Michigan Ag Experiment Station. Then I was with Bay County, Michigan County Government. Then yeah. I went to the BIA, and then I came back That's to the, soil, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Oh, okay. Out on the Rosebud Indian Reservation. I was a soil scientist with them, putting in an, irriga an irrigation project. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it pretty sounds cool. Yeah, cool yeah. If you're into dirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when you're drawing the maps, do you ever just make stuff up? No, you can't do that. Well, you can. You could. Yeah. But, it, but uh, ethically, morally, I couldn't do it. It was like, I think I know what's over there without putting my hole down, but I need to go over there just to confirm that what I'm thinking is right. Uh-huh. And, and yeah, that's just the way you do so it. So the maps, these are soil maps. Soil maps. Explain right. what those are. Well, you open up the, uh, the soil survey report and there's maps, we have one for every county. Mm -hmm. These are the hard copy maps now. And it's just, uh, you got an aerial photo background or base mm -hmm. and then all the different soil types are outlined uh, on that map. So if you wanted to look at your farm, say, or say a, a quarter section of 160 acres, uh, you could see what soil types are 
on your farm. Now, now that's all digital now. You just get on the web soil survey and all that stuff's uh, on the internet. So did you, the USDA, did they do all the probing or is it like a combination of probing and like the topography? Yeah, good question because uh, what you're doing is reading the landscape. landscape. I like to say that uh, as we were soil scientists, soil classifiers, soil mappers, mm -hmm. we were observing nature, putting nature to the question, and investigating the phenomena of the natural world. And we we're doing that by observing how soils occur on the landscape. So that aerial photo was our base that we used as a base map. And then we were making observations of the different soils and then knowing those five, five soil forming factors in the definition, that's what allowed us to make the maps. So this, is this an example of the probe? It is. Well, this is a, a profile uh, of a wet prairie soil. Yeah. And this is the top soil here and you can see that it's what, six, 12, about 12, 14 inches of nice black topsoil. Then it gets into a gray subsoil. Uh, this happens to be a profile of drummer silty clay loam. Mm -hmm. And you know what, why that's significant? The, sh yes. <laughs> you should have learned it in FFA. Well, no, you, you're too old to have learned it in FFA. Your kids probably learned it in FFA. It's the it's drummer silty clay loam is Illinois state soil. We have a state soil? We have a state soil. Okay. Pretty, I remember in grade school we voted on the state fish. Did, did, and, and it's what the bluegill. Bluegill, exactly. Should, should have been the bass. But anyway, <laughs> did the did the grade school kids vote on this? Well, yes and no. Uh, the Illinois Soil Classifiers Association, a professional group that I belong to, back in '85, uh, we were looking at all the state symbols. You have a state bird, a state tree, a state fish, yeah. uh, state flower, and there was one state symbol missing. And that was the soil, and that ties them all together. So uh, the soil, soil classifiers group uh, nominated some soils and drummer ended up winning out. But through the years, it took till 2001 to get it officially approved. And FFA kids voted on it, 4-H kids voted on it. Really? And, and finally it was approved in 2001. Was it hotly contested? It was. Was it the Muscatine it, crowd really upset? There, there was a Ipava crowd that uh, was really upset. Yeah. So you know your soils a little bit. Wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a farmer, but I play one on TV. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, where, where are we? <laughs> All right. hey, I, I know a lot of this stuff because my father-in-law was actually a right. soil scientist. Yeah. You worked with him. I did. Yeah, and, Steve's worker. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, kind of get it. Now, you are retired. Yes. But I think you were doing what he was doing, too. So, like, like someone in the country puts in a house, they need a, a leach field. We used to just put the, the sewage line <laughs> into the field tile, and it was great. Never had to worry about it yeah, again. Yeah. But apparently that's a, a no, they don't, no They don't like that anymore. No. Yeah, but that was, that was done, you're right, a lot uh, in the country back in the day. Yeah. But now there's, yeah, the soils dictate the kind of system you can or can't have and then how uh, big your leach field needs to be to work properly. Yeah, so if uh, the soils are, they won't take in water, nutrients, more compact, then it has to be a bigger leach field. Or an alternative system where you can't have a leach field, an aeration system. It's an outhouse. Or, or an outhouse. Yeah. <laughs> they work. <laughs> I suppose they do. <laughs> that, would you, are you just getting like a private calls, people calling you up and say, hey, because yeah, yeah. you can't call a government agency to get that no, done. No, and, and this wasn't something that soil scientists in a government agency did. It was always a private sector uh, job mm -hmm. and when I retired I didn't expect I would be doing these but the guys that were handling Central Illinois retired uh, one or two of them died too early a couple moved away and I started getting calls maybe five or six years ago to do them so professionally you know we have to provide that service yeah and uh, so I do them for installers or private homeowners if they're building a new house or they have a septic system that fails the first thing they need is this soil evaluation to uh, decide what kind of system can you or can't have and uh, how big the leach field needs to be. Okay, as a guy building, and I've gone through the process, right? It's annoying because I'm like, I just want to put in whatever I need to do and go. How important is it to really know the soils when you're putting in a leach field? It's very important. Yeah. It's either pay me now or pay me later. If you don't, if you don't pay attention to what the soils will allow you to do, down the road, you're going to have that effluent popping out somewhere in the yard, backing up into the tank and That's into the house, and you don't want thing. that to no, happen. No, <laughs> so on, pay up for what you Christmas. need to do, and <laughs> yeah, especially on Christmas. Yeah. That's a unique tie. Thank I, did, you. Did I, you actually I, pay for it? 
I did, huh. but, and I don't get dressed up for everyone, but well, what do you shark got on farmer, there? and this is a, well, this is a steelhead trout okay. tie, which I've had for probably 40 years, but uh, I, this is a tie tack. That's, uh, that's and I, a tie tack. I, it's a tie tack, and it happens to be a white-tailed deer dropping tie tack. <laughs> I call them scat tacks. I make them and sell them. And if you need, and it, you can use them as lapel pins. Emily, it, I got a, a Alaska moose poop lapel pin that would look perfect on. On oh, my lapel. wife. Yeah. 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 Or, or your daughter. Or, or your daughter. Or anybody. Yeah, your, your, your father in law probably has one. Okay. <laughs> Let me collect myself here for a second with the next question. How, how okay, how did you get into this? Okay, go back to mapping soils. You're out there walking across the landscape, yeah. five or six miles a day, uh, cutting across the drainage patterns, drilling 50 or 60 holes, observing the soils, making that soil map. Well, if you can imagine being out in nature, you're coming across all kinds of interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. and crap. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, well, I wonder who left this or what left this. <laughs> so you got into scatology, which is the study of excrement or dung. You and, study it. And, you study it. So it's just like animal tracks. Yeah. Those are two ways to identify animals, animal tracks and animal scat. Yeah. So, you know, just as crew, as our crews out mapping the soils, we would talk about, well, I found some beaver droppings today or white-tailed deer. Or I thought whatever. that was always in the water. No, no. No. They, they, they like to. Right where they chop down, cut down their trees, they leave some there. Oh. Some. Anyway, Sounds woody. I, back in the 80s, I was working in Vermont and I met a soil scientist from Virginia at a meeting who had some white tailed deer dropping tie tacks. I thought that was one of the greatest things I'd ever seen. So I bought some from him. He was selling them a dollar a piece. And then I bought more from him. I got home, gave them away, had fun with them. Yeah. And I called him and said, hey, Dean, send me some more. And finally I said, Dean, do you care if I start making these myself? He said, go at it. So I started a little enterprise called <laughs> Scat Tax. <laughs> There's no trademark on. I should have. Okay. <laughs> I should have. I mean, how does it, do you lacquer it? Or yeah, what do you do? Yeah, so you, you, you collect, and I get people sending me boxes of inventory from all over the country. Poop. Poop. Alaska moose, Ontario moose, Maine moose. You know, every Maine once in a while somebody sends us something nice, and we really appreciate <laughs> it. You, you get boxes of poop. And I appreciate it. Okay, it, yeah. but it's not lacquered. No, when they send it's it to just you. if they found it and they send it to me. So I dip it in polyurethane a couple times. Let it, you know, air dry it. Let it dip it in polyurethane, and then I buy the hardware, the the, the jewelry hardware, and yeah. I just uh, glue it to that. I, does it hold up? Well, this one I probably did five years ago or longer. That's so it's fine looking turd you yeah, got thank, there. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we talk about a lot of things on this show. Okay. But when they send it to you in a box, I mean, it's poop, right? Is, does it like get bustled well, around if, if you, and? Well, it's a little bit. You got to pack don't, it? You don't take, they pack it pretty good usually. And if you don't take care of it pretty quickly, it can start disintegrating on you. What's the most <laughs> unique uh, piece of jewelry that you've made? Oh my. Uh, well, tomato hornworm. You know what a tomato hornworm is? They're the big green ones? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Have yeah. you ever seen their poop? I can't say that I have. Uh, well. It looks like a little itty bitty corn cob. <laughs> you know the problem so that, with you, Bob, is I never know if you're pulling my leg no, or I'm not. No, I'm not, I swear. And I've done, uh, uh, well, my daughter, I think I might have mentioned this at one time that just she was, when she was maybe two or three years old, she came running in from the garage and goes, Dad, Dad, there's a toad in the garage and it's pooping. Ah. Now, I would have never known what toad poop looked like unless we actually saw it happening, so I've done toad before. I bet you were excited too. Oh, I was. You... <laughs> this toad is poopy. <laughs> Get the locker. <laughs> My kids were great inventory specialists because they would come in all the time and yeah. uh, with different. Uh, okay, and this is. Uh, those are different. Yeah, this is different. They're, they're uh, all dipped in polyurethane, so you can handle them. I'm, it's, I'm it's guessing a... I can't. I mean, this this. I, well, okay, that's a unique one. That's dinosaur. Yes, it is. That's dinosaur poop. They're like poop. snowflakes. That's They're dinosaur tour. poop. This is dinosaur yeah. poop. Coprolite, it's called. I got, huh. that, that's in there. It's got a little, I, can't, I think it's called coprolite. So, okay, that's an acre. Some of the stuff you can see what they ate. 
Yeah, well, that's what that's what scatology is. It's a study of, of animal. Should have dipped this one three times to look at their diet. That actually is a mule from the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Jackass poop. <laughs> ah. That's Alaska moose poop. That's I mean that's a that's a neat it's a good one. shape. That, yeah. That's that's solid. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's all put together here. Right. This is your yeah yeah. That's fine looking fine looking stuff you got there. What's this black one? Oh, that's yeah. raccoon. It's you got raccoon. it labeled. Yeah, I got them labeled. Yeah. Filthy little trash yeah. pandas. Yeah, <laughs> they are. All right. Uh, before we run out of time, do do your thing. This oh, is this sure. is really cool. It is cool. Yeah. So, uh, and it's a dem demonstration I've used for years and and love it. And it really sends a good message. So, if this was planet Earth, mm -hmm. uh, how much of planet Earth is ocean or water? A bunch of it. A bunch of it. About what percent? You is think? it seventy? Close. It's seventy-five, actually. Okay, I didn't so, know. I didn't know we had a quiz. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would have studied. So what I do then, if I don't cut myself. That knife. Uh, that knife's been around a while. It has, and you do you notice what kind of knife it is. Is it Perina? It is. My dad worked for Ralston Perina for forty-two years. Nice. Yeah. So, with, so seventy-five percent is water. Just throw that out. Throw that out. Yeah. What's left? Well. Are you good 20, at math? 25 percent. Now, if we again, <laughs> I, you're eventually going to ask something I don't know, so we should stop. Well, I'm getting this close. Now. I'm yeah. getting close. You're, I think. You damn close. <laughs> so if uh, you took away Antarctica, the Arctic, the mountains, yeah. and the deserts, how much would you be taking away of this? Let's. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Fifty percent. Exactly. Right. Good job. So you take away 50 percent of that. Now Did here's you hear where that well. I got it right. Here's where it starts getting difficult, though. How much is left? Well, of 50 percent. Of 50 percent of what? An eighth or okay. a quarter. So that leaves an eighth. I see. This is where I didn't want to get. This is. I know. Yeah. Right. Just I, okay. keep cutting okay. up okay. your apple. Right. Okay. So we've got an eighth <laughs> left. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I take away those areas that are too wet, too rocky, yeah. or already developed, how much of this would you think I'd be taking away? Looks like you're cutting I'm, off half. I, I'm taking away three quarters. Okay, or, or so three that, quarters. I mean, so honestly, your cut was not exactly well, not right exactly. Either. It wasn't yeah. exact. It was close enough. Yeah. So, the point is, this is what's left to feed the world. Mm -hmm. But it's even worse than that because if you really look at what's left to feed the world, yeah, it's that because you don't. You don't plant the mantle. Right. Yeah. You just do the dirt. Yeah. You're even that's aggressive. That's, a, we don't have that's that much topsoil. But that's. What? This is Illinois, probably does compared to a lot of the places. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It is a great example it of, is. Uh, to, you know, you think and the entire apple is earth, and literally this is what feeds yeah. all the people yeah. on there. And most of our population doesn't appreciate and understand that. No. Which is sad. Yeah, exactly. And in order to feed people correctly, we got to have good dirt. Right. Yeah. And we got it. It's the best in the world right here in northern and central Illinois. So, you know, farmers, they, they completely understand that stuff. What do you want to tell people that aren't farmers? And, you know, honestly, it's not going to be something you think about every day. But what, what's important about dirt? Well, it, it, it does feed the world. Uh, and we do have the best soils in the world right here, and it's a quirk of nature that allowed us to have that. So just appreciate our soil resources and mm -hmm. uh, try to help take care of them. How's the, the books going? <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't ask. <laughs> I've added a couple little more stories to the folders you're, you're writing since a, I talked to you last. You're writing one book or multiple books? i got a couple working on. Works in progress. And how long have you been working on the books? Uh, the first one I started, I wrote the preface in June of 1990. That's a long time, 33 years. Okay. Is it, is it a long book? <laughs> it's not really. It's very interesting, though. Okay. It, we had you on the XM show, and right. I, I told you I think you might want to, you know, get working on that. I need to get my button gear. Yeah. yeah. You got seven grandkids. I do. Holy cow! They, I've heard, I've had people on shows before that says the whole purpose of having kids is so that you can play with the grandkids. Is that true? I would mark that up as a yes. Really? Yeah. Are they it, close? 
they uh, two of them live 200 yards down the road. Nice. And the other five are within five minutes. Oh wow! And our house is uh, like they're, they're growing up as siblings more than they are cousins, which That's is nice. really cool. And their age is the youngest is seven, the oldest is 12. Hmm. So we got seven of them in that time span there. My gosh, that which it, probably keeps you busy. It does. Yeah. We've Do got I think three ball games to go to tonight. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> do they? Uh, do you see their eyes glaze over when you start talking about soil? Oh no, they come out on these soil evaluations with me. Really? They love it. They're into it. Yeah. Is that? I it must be them, genetic. I, I pay them one percent, and then maybe an ice cream cone. <laughs> nice. Well, I tell you, if if people want to find more about your your books, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe more importantly, more about the uh, the the scat jewelry or just uh, to get a hold to ask questions is there a place they can go i don't have a website you don't have a, an, an email they have to show up i got are email r dot, r dot mcleese at yahoo mcleese has three e's in it it does m c Oof. capital L, l e e s e yeah generally they put it on the bottom but you can never trust it so it's good yeah. that you it's good that you <laughs> yeah okay you've had you've had a very unique career and honestly as a farmer i know how important what you do is right so it gives a good understanding of literally how a person like i uh, can do a better job at growing crops you're kind of like one of those people that uh the unsung hero of the world no i don't know about that i'm proud of the legacy that i helped leave though of these yeah. soil reports because as you say the farmers use that information and, and with your gis systems now being able to br bring your soil map on top of your yield map and your fertilizer map. It, Did you it, it know helps. that when you were doing that, that eventually someday a farmer is going to look at the, those maps and then when it gets to a, a different soil type, their planter is going to automatically change the population or we're going to automatically change the rate of fertilizer? I, 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 I think a lot of people thought that that's what it was going to come to, and it has come yeah. to that because that's just techn the way technology advances uh, that's just where it had to go. Mm -hmm. Think about the uh, technology advances in scat jewelry that's going to come. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. My grandkids are going to do wonders, I think. Do you ever do the whole, like, uh, the cow pie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had a guy bring in a, there's a, there's a bison that are uh, raised close to Monticello. And a guy brought in a couple of bison uh, dro droppings for me, and I made doorstops out of those. Sounds lovely. <laughs> thank you. Bob McLeese from Monticello, Illinois. Thank you for all that you did. 35 years as a soil scientist. Very, very interesting. Bob, thank you. Everybody else, we'll catch you next time.